What's up, y'all? Hello. How you guys doing? You guys doing good? How many of you are blessed tonight? We did. Thank you, PW team, for ushering us into worship. I can tell like something's about to go down tonight because like the enemy's trying to like bring us down with all this, but you already know Jesus always wins, right? Yeah. So what have we what have we been talking about last two weeks? Yeah. A walk to remember. How many of you were here when we opened up the series? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So two weeks ago we opened up the series called I caught a walk to remember. How many of you watched that movie? I did. Oh, to be honest, right here. <laughs> yeah, a walk to remember. So, how many of you like that movie? Yeah. Never watched it. It's okay. I haven't either, actually. But <laughs> it'll change your life. <laughs> Josie, it'll change your life. Change his, I guess. But we've been talking about like stories of the Bible where someone or the disciple is walking with Jesus. Right, and we've been talking about, well, we haven't really because we opened up the series. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about it for the rest of the weeks coming up. I don't know how long it'll be, but the next few weeks, we'll be talking about like stories where um, disciples or someone was walking with Jesus. Right, so tonight, that's what we're going to talk, talk about. Um, so, but before we go on, let's just uh, pray one more time and just invite God to this place. So. Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight, Lord God. Thank you for the worship, Lord God, that you've allowed us to do, Lord God. We thank you for being in this place, Lord God. You are here in this place, Lord God. So, Lord God, may tonight be a night where we just feel refreshed, Lord God. May we just hear a refreshing word, but also a convicting word, Lord God, so that we can change our ways, Lord God, so that we can go back to you, Lord God. May we just continue to grow in you, Lord God, in every single day, Lord God. So I pray that you just use me tonight, Lord God, I pray that your word be said tonight, and not my words, Lord God. And may you just open up the hearts of the people tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. Um, so tonight, actually, I was thinking about, like, this week, I was thinking about, like, what to preach about, right? So there's a lot of things to talk about, like, when walking with Jesus. But I think, to me, um, I, I went back to, like, the... The reason why we chose this series is that when we did that survey, how many of you did that survey a couple of weeks ago? Yeah. Well, a lot of you guys was asking like, how do we spend time with God? How do we do the devotion, right? And so I was like, you know what? Um, how do we spend time with devotion? I think it's just fair that we talk about prayer, right? Um, it's not gonna be, I'm gonna touch base on like what the basis of prayer are is, but like, there's something more to a prayer, right, that we, I want to talk to you guys and what God spoke to me about this week. And um, that's what we're going to be talking about, prayer. And if you have your Bibles, your Bibles, our verse for tonight is going to be found in Luke 11, 1 to 13. So you can flip your Bibles, you can tap your Bibles, you can click your Bibles. <laughs> Just get there, 11, Luke 11, verses... 1 to 13. You guys there? Hello? You guys still there? You guys sleep already? They're just not here. How many of you are there? One. Yeah. Well, you should be because it's already up here. Come on, guys. Are right, you guys ready? Yes. All right, all right. Let's unpack this. Um, so Luke 11, 1, 13. Uh, verse 1, it says, One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. And I'm going to stop right there already, guys. We already read 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, ver nine, nine words. And God already, when I first read this verse, uh, this, uh, this story, nine verses, and it already, God already spoke to me. And that's what the beauty about the Bible is, right? You can read like two words, Jesus wept, or like you can read nine words and God is already speaking to you. So I encourage you guys, read the Bible and just, just you don't have to read the whole Bible to learn about God, right? You just got to read it. So we're going to talk about this specific phrase and, and um, to Americans they say, um, it says in a certain place, Filipinos they say the certain place, 
<laughs> but that's what we're going to be talking about, right? In a certain place. In the first verse, it talks about Jesus praying in a, in a certain verse. So what's happening here, I'll give you a, a, just a quick, um, are you cold? <laughs> Looks like you are. <laughs> we're going to talk about, like, Jesus. He was talking to his disciples. But first he was praying, and then the disciples were asking him how to pray. And Jesus, in, the, in this verse, he says that Jesus was praying in a certain place. Right, so how many of you um, know the definition of um, this word called certain? Say? Specific. Specific. Good job. You get a candy later. <laughs> Who else wants a candy? <laughs> in a certain place, right? Um, so let's just, that's, the, that's like the one word that spoke to me in, the, in a certain place. So um, there's two meanings to, um, to the word certain, and it says, established or specific like Sexy said or the other meaning to that is um, um, known for sure or established beyond doubt so let's let's look at this right Jesus was praying in a certain place in a certain place so he was praying at a specific place in a spe specific time of the day so what do I want you guys to learn now is that um, prayer it should be done in a specific time, in a specific place. Um, this is not the prayer where, I'm not saying that you can't talk to God when you're like driving or when you're like bored or like when you're just, you're just going along your day. I'm not saying that you can't talk to God, but I'm talking about like the devotion, right? I'm talking about like spending time with God one-on-one, -on -one, like just stepping away from all the things that you're doing in your life. It has to be like a specific time, right? I know you can pray, like, you can pray, like, while you're driving, when you're about to eat and all that, but we're talking about here the devotion, right? When we're literally just staying in one place and just saying, God, what do you want to say for, what do, what do you want to say to me today? Today, what, what is it that you want me to do tonight? What is it that you want me to do well, to the others, right? It has to be that one specific time and place. And, and my prayer is that, Prayer should be like an established thing in our daily lives, right? It can't be like a last minute resort, right? Um, it can't be like the last two minutes of your day after FaceTiming for like two hours, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Prayer, prayer can't be that thing. It can't be that one thing that you said, okay, I just leveled up my 2K ratings. <laughs> now I'm gonna pray for like a minute and I'm gonna crash, right? It can't be that. It can't be like that. It has to be like a specific time and a specific place where you're like, okay, I'm going to put everything away. I'm just going to sit here and listen to God. That's what prayer should be, right? We can't allow the bus busyness in our lives to distract us. Um, if, you, if, if we go back to the verse, um, to the next verse, yeah, right there. Um, if you look at the second, the second verse after that, oh, you can go to the verse. When he finished, right? So it says here, one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. When he finished, one of the disciples said to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. And when, when I read that, it's like, this is what's happening, guys. Jesus was praying here, and once he finished praying, he turns around and someone's asking questions. Like, that's what's happening, right? Jesus just finished praying, and someone else was already trying to ask him how to, how to, how to pray, right? Do you, you guys get that picture? Like, literally, when he finished, when he finished, he turns around, and all his disciples were there, right? And he asked, they already asked questions, you know? So, this shows that Jesus is really devo devoted to God, right? Because sometimes we get caught up in doing God's work, right? Rather than catching what God has to say to us, right? So Jesus here in this time, like a couple of chapters before, Jesus was like feeding the 5,000. He was feeling the, the dead man, right? He was doing all these miracles in life, in, in his works. But he had the moment, he had the time to, to stop and just say, you know what, God, Jesus, my father, I'm going to devote myself to you right now. I know my disciples are here. I know I have work to do. I know I got a lot of things to do. I got plenty of homework. I got, I got so many things to do, right? I got two jobs. 
I got two phones. But God, I'm going to put it away. I'm just going to spend my time with you. Amen? That's what prayer should be. Amen? Right? You guys agree or no? Well, too bad if you don't. <laughs> it should be. It should be like that, right? It has to be like a specific time of your day, really, right? Um, the second definition of certain is that, like, known for sure or established beyond doubt. That's from uh, dictionary.com. <laughs> and so what, is God is, what God is doing here is that he was praying in a certain place, right? He was playing, he was praying in, 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 in a time of his life where the, the enemy wasn't trying to catch him. No one was trying to kill him yet, right? But can I tell you that even in the times of uncertainty, you can pray to God? And when you're, when you're in a time of, of your, like, your darkest moments, or like when you're, when you're having like a bad grade, or like when, you're, when you think that no one likes you, or that in the midst of like a big decision in your life, or whenever you're like hurting or you're grieving, whenever you're sick, there's no circumstance, circumstance that, can, that should stop you from praising God, from praying to God. In fact, those are the things that, sh that are times where you should be praying to God, right? I can go to God, I can go to God, I can talk to God because there's no, there's no valley, there's no, nothing that can stop me from praising God. Right? There's no separation because God, Jesus died for us on that cross. Amen? Amen? And then even though I walk through like the valley of, the valley of death, man, my God is there for me. Like there was a time where um, I was going to camp. Um, I, how many of you remember that camp place where it's so far? Well, it's all of it. <laughs> like, there's one campsite that we go like three hours away. There's another one that's really far. The one with like super up mountains, cabins. You guys remember that? Uh, Pastor Dream says Great Commission. Yeah. How far is that, Pastor? About three and a half. Three and a half hours, guys. So what's happening was well, like me, my sister, and my mom were going to, um, we were going to camp. And the way to get to that campsite, it's very scary. Like it's, it's yeah. like in the trees. Like you go through like, it's almost like Santa Cruz, but like 10 times worse because there's no lights or anything. But we were going. It was just me and my sister and, and uh, my mom. And, man, and back then, it was just like those signs where GPS is a, like a real thing, like GPS, like an actual GPS. <laughs> not, not just on your phones, but like the things you plug into your thing and then you put it on your mount. You guys know what I'm talking about? Or am I not that old? <laughs> right, those GPS, and 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 one time like we were like no, we, we didn't print those map quests. <laughs> we had GPS, <laughs> right? <laughs> but like at that time, like it was so scary. Like when we got to like the the winding winding trees, like our GPS lost connection. <laughs> Can you imagine that you're like in the middle of like nowhere? It's so dark, but you lose your connection, right? But what am I trying to say? That in this world, you can lose your direction, but God never loses his sight of you. Amen. Right? Amen. You, you can lose your direction in life, but even whenever you're lost, God still sees you. <laughs> Man, God still sees you. And that is why, even though we feel like we're lost, you're not. God sees you. So you can reach out to him. Amen? Like, you can lose all your data or all that to talk to someone, but talking to God, all you just got to do is reach out to Him. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Okay. So, yeah. let me ask you one thing. What is the one thing that you like about your best friend? So, this is an open discussion, so we don't have discussions later, so we're, we're getting, we got to kill, kill it now. Discussions. What is the one thing you love about your best friend, Ray? I think it's good. I don't want to put you on the spot. He's annoying. He's annoying. Okay. Best friends, anyone got one? Lena? Her personality. Which one? Like every single one of them. Every single personality. Who? You got us. Yeah, family. Yeah, family. Best friend? What's up, my best friend? <laughs> music choice. 
Music choice, okay, okay. Everybody got like one thing going up about their best friend? Over here? Camille? She's a woman of God. Woman of God. Yeah, there you go. Who else? Best friends? Let's talk, let's talk about these best friends. Best friends. Listen to all about poop. Oh. 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 Yeah. Two more. One thing to love about their best friend. Come on. That's it? That's it? Jay, you raise me hand. Who? Thanks for sharing. That's a best friend, right? I wish my... But anyways, what we're talking about here is like, talking about our best friend, right? I think one of the things that is great about having a best friend is that you can talk to them about anything, right? It's food, that's the best thing. That's, that's a good one. <laughs> but yeah, like I think one thing that is very important when you when you have that, that friendship is that you can talk about anything. Like you can talk about like silly things. You can talk about um, common things, right? You can talk about like serious things in life and. And I think that's amazing, right? For if you have someone that in your life, then you should keep them, but so. <laughs> huh? Oh, I thought you were raising your hand. <laughs> right? It's the same thing, like it shows you how close you are with your best friend, right? When you can talk about like your like your secrets or if you can talk about like your like something you did wrong and you want to confess and you can't tell anyone you need help, right? It takes it takes that bond for you to open up some, you're not gonna tell someone from the mall, say, hey, you, look, I just did something bad today. Right, you're not gonna do that. <laughs> right? I just dabbed on them, but uh, that's a bad one. That's a bad uh, example, but, right? You're not gonna go up to someone you just met and say, look, I steal, my, st I steal people's food, I lie, I talk, I talk smack. You don't do that, right? But if you have like someone close to you and you're like, you know, you know what? Man, I've been struggling with this, right? I've been struggling with my prayer, my walk, I've been struggling about my 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 life. And you can just open up to him. And I want you to know that God is like that. Right? I want you to know that it's the same thing with God. Right? Our our connection to God. Uh, that would be the next point. Our connection to God or how you pray shows how your relationship with God is. Kind of the same thing as what we talked about when I preached the first time, right? How you pray shows how your relationship with God is, right? Because all, all, this, all this thing, this Christianity, is all about relationship, right, with, with Jesus Christ. And that uh, if you don't have a good relationship with God, like you might say, okay, I don't, I don't, I don't really know God, or I'm, I'm new, I just got dragged here, or like, I'm, I'm too young to know about this, but if you don't have a good relationship with God, if you don't, if you don't have any relationship with God at all, you can, <laughs> right? It doesn't take much effort. All you have to do is trust Him, believe, accept Him, and believe in what He's done on the cross, and admit you're a sinner, and that's it. You have the relationship with God, and He is waiting for you. Amen? And, and the, the crazy thing is that all the promises that He has in the Bible all those, all those like promises that he has, it all starts with a prayer, amen? It, it's on the prayer that, this is what Andrew Murray said, it says, it is on prayer that the promises of God are fulfilled, yeah. right? There's so many promises in life, there's so many things at Costco, if you don't go to Costco, ain't gonna get it. Chicken bake, oh, oh. that's like my go-to when I have someone to go with. The gospel card. Because <laughs> I don't have one. My sister has one. But dude, all those promises that God has for you, it all starts with a prayer. Like if you ask God, He'll give it to you. Right? So the glory, the forgiveness, the grace, the power that comes from God, it all starts when you ask for it. Right? 
And speaking of like superpowers, another discussion right here. What is something that you'd have you'd like to have, like the superpower that you wish for? Every superpower. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's too smart. But one thing. Like what do you consider? What do I consider a superpower? Is it this or that? Superpowers, come on man. <laughs> So technical, what kind of superpowers? Come on, when I was a kid, when someone asked me that, I was like, I want to fly. Yours are so technical. Super speed? You want to eat everything? You can. But not get fat. What is? What else? Superpowers. Read minds? That's a good one. Huh? Invisibility. <laughs> what about you guys? Huh? <laughs> Transfer talents? Yeah. Little Kobe, or like the next day you will be like Drake. To make anyone happy. Also basketball. Huh? Stop time. Healer? There you go. Telepathy is what he spells that. <laughs> what else? Superpowers back there. What? Superpowers. <laughs> Make good Starbucks. It's not a superpower, man. It's a responsibility. <laughs> superpowers. Black Panther. What is a superpower? When he drinks that thing, becomes superpower. Become taller. Or become shorter. All these things, right? Alright, guys. So, um, superpower. Why am I talking superpower? You know, one thing that a lot of people would love to check. Uh, well, control people. That's what I was going to say. Like, the ability to persuade people, right? The ability to, like, talk. Like the attorneys, right? If you can persuade, persuade someone to like agree to you, I feel like the president. The president has to have like a good persuasion, right? How are you gonna vote for someone who like doesn't know how to persuade you? <laughs> so, but sometimes it works, <laughs> sadly, right? But to persuade someone is like is like one of the things that a lot of people um, like to have. Yeah? What? Oh yeah, control me with a cookie. <laughs> but, but did you know, like, fun fact, did you know that the Bible almost never teaches a disciple how to preach? But, but the Bible, or Jesus, teaches how to pray a lot more, right? And, and, and the next slide uh, it says, right, I think the reason why it is like that is that to know how to speak to God is more important than knowing how to speak to man. Right? That's from the writer. He's like a missionary back then, Andrew Murray, and he said that. I want to repeat it. To know how to speak to God is more important than knowing how to speak to man. And I think that's, I think that's true. Right? Being able to please God, the man, I think that's something that I would, I would rather have, right? If I can please God, then I'm set. Because if I'm trying to please people, I'm going to have to change so many things about me. I'm going to have to do certain things that I don't like just to please people. But with God, God's never changing. Right? And, and, I, and it's, it's true. Knowing how to pray is more important than how to speak to people. And so, next slide. All right, I lost my like transition there, <laughs> but we're gonna go on to like the next verse, right? So we were reading a story. So what happened was just like Jesus was like saying, he just finished praying, and the disciples were saying, "Lord, teach me, teach us how to pray," right? And so this is what what Jesus said, right? Pray this, 
And it says, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, we, for we are also, for we also forgive everyone who sins against us, and lead us into to, not into temptation. All right. I got a question for you guys. Do you think we should be praying same exact prayer every time? No. Right, because Jesus said the disciples asked him, Jesus, teach us how to pray, and said, okay, say this. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? This this kind of confused me too, to be honest. Like, kind of, I got I got kind of stunned, and I was like, "Oh, is this how we're supposed to pray? <laughs> right? Are we supposed to say this?" But I think God here is just giving us a model, right? It, and the same exact prayer was shown in Matthew six nine. So if you can go to the next slide, this is the the two comparison of that prayer. So I'm gonna read Matthew six nine to thirteen, and it says, "Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name." Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debt, debtors, debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. If you see those two, they're saying the same thing, but like, they're kind of different. They have like different board structure, right? And so, what, I don't want you guys to get confused and say, okay, I gotta pray a certain way, I gotta do a certain way. But, Praying to God should be a part of our lives every single day, but it shouldn't be a pattern, right? <clears throat> Praying should be a part of our daily lives, but it shouldn't be like a pattern where we just, okay, I have to pray again. Jesus, forgive me. Thank you for today and everything you've done for me. Thank you for your grace and your love. Amen. It shouldn't be like that, right? Even though here it was like same exact mission, but different way to say it. So what I was trying to say here, it's not, it's not like a ritual but it has to be coming from your heart, right? It has to be coming from your heart. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be, like, it shouldn't be like a pattern. It has to be like something very genuine and um, just talking like your friend, right? You don't say the same thing to your friends every day, otherwise that would be kind of annoying. <laughs> How's your weekend <laughs> on a Monday or on a Tuesday? Dude, you asked me that yesterday, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Dang, it's hot. Swim. <clears throat> All right. So, so G Jesus talks about like how to pray, right? He shows the model right here, and and the next thing that he does is he he gives a parable. He gives like an example. How many of you were here last week? Actually, it was fun. Yeah. We did like some skits about parables led by our pastor at PHF. <laughs> I was a storm. Yep. If you haven't seen those, if you weren't here last week. It's on YouTube, so subscribe to us, to our YouTube channel, <laughs> if you miss any of the messages. But, but here, God is telling us a story, so let me read, to you, read it to you guys. So pay attention real quick. <clears throat> Ready? Oh, next. Three. Thank you. All right, it says, Jesus said to them, suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, friend, lend me your phone charger. I mean, lend me your three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me and I have no food to offer him. Pretty much he's saying here, like, look, my friends, my family's coming from LA. They're gonna be here in an hour. I need some food. <laughs> That's what he's saying, right? I need something. I don't have I don't have anything in my house, you know, like put it in like your your life right now. Look, my friend's gonna come over, can I borrow your PS4? My friend's coming over, can I borrow your PS4? Can, can you just help me with this, right? And then it says, I got lost with all those examples. <laughs> and suppose the one inside answers your friend and says, don't bother me. The door is already locked and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and, I give, and give you anything. I'll tell you, even though he will not get up, this is Jesus saying it. I'll tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of his because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So, let me give you like context right here. There's no texting back then, <laughs> right? When he asked his friend to borrow something or to get some bread, um, 
They're, he's not texting them. He's not FaceTiming them. He's not calling them, right? Right, Jordan? Yup, yup. He wasn't texting them. He wasn't like telling them, like, yo, I need something. I mean, he didn't text it. He didn't like do anything. But like, let me give you like the context right here. Uh, I, I was like curious, like, what does what do houses look like back then? Pinterest. Thank you. Wow. I wonder how much that would cost now. <laughs> like, this is how the houses were back then, right? So usually they have like their courtyard downstairs and that's where they sleep upstairs, right? As you can see, you're at their courtyard and that's where they sleep and everything. So, so when you go, you, you go to someone at midnight, bless you. So when you have to ask someone for help, you gotta yell. <laughs> Right? This is this is like made in stones and everything. Um, so I'm just giving you like a tech context right here where when when that friend, what Jesus was talking about, that friend, when he has to go ask for help from his friend, he has to walk. He has to get out of the house at midnight. How many of you would walk at midnight to, like tonight? It's so cold. <laughs> right? Um what am I saying here is that going at midnight, bothering the whole family, having to like climb maybe some stairs just to hear, just to talk to them, or like making so many noises where the, the animals and the kids will wake up, right? Let me just ask our the parents in the house, how hard, how hard is it to like put your, your kids to, to bed? Impossible. <laughs> Impossible, right? You got to do that. <laughs> Just imagine that, like, Kuro off and James just put Bradley to bed, and someone knocks on the door and wakes up Bradley. That would be pretty annoying, right? But, like, what, what, what are we talking about here, right? What we're talking about here is that when you ask God for something, when this guy went to his friend to, to knock on the door, to, to ruin the vibe at midnight, to, like, stop whatever is, or, like, to, like, make a noise and all that, what it shows here is that it shows humility, right? It shows perseverance and boldness. So when we're praying, when we're asking God for something in our lives, we gotta come out with like humility and perseverance and boldness. Like this guy had, this guy needed something, right? This person needed something. He needed like, needed a bread because his friends are coming. And what I'm trying to tell you right now is that if you wanna gain confidence in your life, you don't need to get social media likes. If you want to grow in your walk, you don't need approval from others. If you want to be accepted, you don't gotta to go to parties or like do things that are not pleasing to you and not pleasing to God. If you want to feel joy, you don't need, you don't need to be with that person. You don't need that car to feel, to feel happy. All you have to do is go to Jesus, right? This man right here needed something and he went out of his comfort zone. He became uncomfortable to bother his friend and you know why he said I need something yeah. and if you need something tonight I want to tell you guys that you don't have to go to this world that you can go to Jesus right and he's available to you that it doesn't matter how you get it I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to persevere I'm going to God right it doesn't matter if I if I embarrass myself in front of my friends it doesn't matter if it makes me look bad it's just the way to do it, right? If you want something, if you want happy, if you want, if you want joy, or if you want something from God, just go ahead and ask them. If you feel like you're lonely, if you feel like you're, you're just not good enough, don't go to social media or anything like that. Go to Jesus. I know sometimes we, we feel like we're, we're just not good enough for Jesus to come out, and we just feel like we're not worthy enough to, to ask Jesus for something. But can I tell you that God loves you? You know, sometimes I feel like when we don't pray, is that because we're shy, we're scared, we feel like, we feel like you, Jesus is not listening to you, but I want to tell you tonight that Jesus has his arms wide open. He's waiting for you. Yeah? Don't get discouraged when God doesn't give us what we ask right away. Because sometimes when we, there's so many times in our lives when we ask God for something, and we, we really should be thankful that God didn't answer that, because there's so many things that we asked for God that we thought was right and was good for us, but better you find out it's not good enough, right? 
And like sometimes we ask God, like how come he doesn't answer right away? Do you think God wants us to beg? Do you guys think God wants us to beg? When he doesn't answer right away? Do you think God needs like, needs to say, okay, beg first before I give you something? No, it, does, it, does, it doesn't work like that. God sometimes allows us to wait and persevere so that it changes our character. Right? Can you imagine just asking God for something and then um, just he gives, us, he gives it to us right away? Right? We're going to start treating God like, like a vending machine. Right? If God just gives us everything, everything right away, we're not gonna like we're not gonna have perseverance. We're not gonna have patience or anything. So when God doesn't answer your prayers, He's teaching you something. Amen. And we should be grateful, right? But sometimes when 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 Jesus answers, when God answers our prayers, a lot of times we're not satisfied, <laughs> right? When we ask God for patience, sometimes it gives us problem. Like, God, I've been asking for, for me to grow in my patience. But you give me problems. God, I ask for joy and you give me problems. God, I ask for contentment and you take away something. <clears throat> sometimes the answers that we don't want to hear is what God really wants to give to you. Because how are you going to produce patience if your life is good? Right? So sometimes God allows those hardships and trials for us to, to, to get that patience, to get that, um, that joy. Because God wants to teach you something that, look, I'm not going to give this to you to give you joy because I don't want your joy to be dependent on this, but I want your joy to be dependent on me. All right? So sometimes there's a lot of, a lot of prayers that God answers, but we don't hear it because we're looking somewhere else. God always answers our prayer, but it's not always how we want it to be, right? It's not always how we want it to be, but we got to be open to what God is doing in our lives and not just asking Him and expecting the same exact thing, but because there, there, is, there is something greater, right? Like, the things of God is greater than what we ask for. Next slide. The next one. All right? Greater is he that is in me than in this world. Right? There's so many things that we ask God. We can, we can do that. We can ask anything from God. But he's not going to give everything. Because there is something greater. There is something greater that he wants to give to you. Right? His ways are greater than our ways. So, um... So Jesus concludes with his statements. We're almost done. Um, Jesus asks this, says, says the same statements. It says, ask and you will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be open. And then verse 11. Um, just skip one of the things. Thank you. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? That's weird. <laughs> right? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, know how much, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So right now I want to change your guys' viewpoint. Right? It says right here, like, if our Father in this world is going to give something good to you they don't want to harm you can you just imagine jesus our father our creator when he asks when we ask something from him he's not going to give us something that will harm us right he's not going to give us scorpions it's weird that was amazing but but yo like when you ask god for something he is a god of god the create your creator and how much more will your Father in Heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him, right? If your Father here in this world, like our fathers are, are amazing. Like my dad's been working for like so many years now and, and it's, 
He's, he's still working, and it's amazing how, how much he works. And, and I don't know how your fathers are in your lives, but I'll tell you that you're Jesus, right? He loves you so much that he will give anything to you. Not anything, but he will give something that will glorify him, something that will teach him, something that will lift him up to glorify his name. And he knows what's best for us, right? Because he loves us. And so when we ask for prayer, sometimes God doesn't answer right away. And I'm closing right now, and I just want to remind you guys that um, when you pray, ask God for bo ask God with boldness. And always, don't always ask for something and expect the same thing. Because Jesus doesn't get, always give you the same thing that you ask for him. But he's going to give you, he's going to act your prayer. But sometimes it's not the way that we want it to be, right? So don't be shy to ask God for prayer for something. Don't be shy. Don't feel like you're not worthy enough to ask something because Jesus loves you. He really does. And so that's one thing that we want to learn that we want to learn tonight is that when walking with Jesus, you gotta spend time with God. It's gotta be a specific time in your life, a specific time of the day, and know that God loves you. And even though He doesn't give what you want, He's gonna give what's best for you because He knows what's best for you. Amen. So we're gonna do an activity, but right now, so we're talking about prayer right now, right? So there's so many people here tonight, and it's amazing, and I know some people haven't been here for a while, and that's also good, you guys. And so we're going to do this thing, we're talking about prayer, so what we're going to do tonight is we're going to have our prayer session, All right? Something um, we don't really do a lot, but I want you guys to kind of just partner up uh, tomorrow, no, I'm just kidding, right now, <laughs> just partner up, so find someone to partner with. Like twos or threes. You also can move around. <laughs> you just turn to your neighbor, but everyone has someone. It's hot. Everyone has someone. So we're gonna do this and we're just gonna literally just pray. Right? We're just gonna pray. You're gonna have your own prayer session right now with that partner that you chose. And so um, I want you guys to pray, ask someone, ask each other, what can I pray for you? Right, what is something that you want me to pray for? And maybe you also wanna pray for something that's happened in this world, not just your own lives, not just like something within you, but if there's something in this world that you wanna pray for, like a government or the students that passed away, um, just, just, just do that. Just do a prayer session. Just ask each other. So, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> 